Hello, Pit Stop viewers. It's me, Bianca Del Rio. We normally don't do this type of thing prior to the Pit Stop, but we felt that it was important today. Today is going to be a difficult episode because we're dealing with someone who has competed on Drag Race 47 times and lost. She's extremely sensitive, so I'm going to stay away from anything that might be controversial or something that might be triggering. So keep that in mind as you watch this episode with the biggest loser ever, Manila Luzon. Back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> and that was my phone, I'm so sorry. It's all right, honey, you do that. Oh, go ahead. Because we're not filming a television show right now. Yeah. She's so busy. It's my grinder. <laughs> <laughs> it was my Sniffy's app. <laughs> Hi, it's Bianca Del Rio, and we're back at the Pit Stop where we recap all things RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars 8. And today, joining me is one of the most successful contestants, although she never won, but she has appeared numerous times on Drag Race, a total of 56 seasons. Let's welcome the one and only Miss Manila Luzon. Hi, Bianca. Hi, Manila. How are you, my darling? I'm good. I, I've been on the pit stop, I think, even more episodes and more seasons than I've been on Drag Race. How many seasons have you been on pit stop? Um, I think I've been on all of them. <laughs> oh, you know what? Wait, fun fact. Manila is actually the only non-winner to host the pit stop. Or because I hosted, does that mean that I actually won? Did I mention she was a non-winner who hosted? <laughs> did I mention she was a non-winner? You mentioned that. I did. You always Isn't mentioned that, that. I didn't even look at my card, but even on my card, non-winner. It well, says non-winner. Manila is a non-winner. The fact that you even remember any of my track record. It's sad. It's is, sad. Yeah. So in between your multi-seasons of Drag Race, what have you been up to? Oh, well, obviously I've still been creating music oh. to spite you. That's what the world needs. That's what the world needs. And, um, and I'm, I'm in the Philippines yeah. and I'm hosting a TV show out there. How brilliant for you. Mm, yes. Now for all of those people, and listen, you know who you are, all of you people on Reddit that have been saying she is useless, she is not talented, she has not achieved anything, Lies! Look at her. She is sitting here tonight, a shining symbol of success. Yes. She really is. So she is doing something. I am proud of you. Oh, thank you. I You're really doing something too. Mm. Doing my old job as the host of The Pit Stop. <laughs> and we're about to announce I'm doing the next eight seasons. Oh, fantastic! I don't, I don't know it yet. Job know security. Yet. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, like yes. I'm gonna make it eight seasons. <laughs> now that we're strolling down memory lane, Manila, I'm gonna ask you, what is your first memory of when we met. Ooh, okay, so this was right after the terrible Hurricane Katrina. Mm -hmm. You came to New York. I did. And um, me and Sahar Davenport, our yes. friend Noel, yes. we were showing you around New York City, showing you all the places where you could possibly work, not knowing that you would take all of our jobs. Well, what's <laughs> funny is they were showing me places I could work that they didn't work at. So it yeah. all kind of worked out in the end. But we But you didn't really want to work at the clubs that we were working at. No, anyway. well no. we worked differently. I would do a show, she was just sucking <laughs> in the back. I mean, if whatever you gotta do. Yes. Yes, to make sure those lips are plump. <laughs> yeah. And then, okay, and then okay. my other memory that I have of you is that you literally had like a trash bag of old drag that you were throwing out. Yes! And you invited a bunch of the queens to come over and go through your trash. So I had snatched a few wigs from you. Oh, that yes. was way back in the day. Yes. And none of them were the lace front wigs. They were all the hard front with bangs. They were all crap wigs. Yes! But they're great for like folding inside out and stuffing as like wig filler. You know what I figured? Hard front wig is perfect for a hard front face. Ah, yes. And that you have, that yes. you have. The first brick thrown at Stonewall. <laughs> Nobody was killed. All right, Manila, all jokes aside, you are a drag race legend. And have you been keeping up with All Stars 8? Oh my gosh, I am loving this season. All Stars is so fun. I love watching all the girls. And I also like that I know all of the queens already. So I don't have to like learn what they look like out of drag mm -hmm. or learn what their, their names are or right. anything. I already know them because they've been on TV already. You've so. got it. Well, are you ready to dive in? I cannot wait. So last week, the queens had to design a look inspired by the drag droppings of a previous all-star winner. 
Previous All-Star winner. Do you, are you familiar with the All-Star winners? Um, Should be easy. It's everybody but you. Yes, yeah, everyone okay. that, yes, yeah, I do yeah, remember yeah, all of them. Everybody but you. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to trigger you again. This is really just what they wrote on the cards. Yes, I Don't want to upset that. you today. You're not upsetting me. <laughs> Good. Last week, the queens had to design a look inspired by the drag droppings of previous All-Star winners, not you. And I'm curious, out of the group of the All-Star winners that were there, which one would you have chosen? Ooh, see, I'm kind of mad that they didn't have the OG All-Stars winner because I would have loved to get Chad Michaels. Oh, but, she got some good drag. Because she would have had like share drag in there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It would be just like long wigs and like, you know, Bob Mackie fabric. Share the Shareness. That's what you would have liked. Well, she was not one of the options. We okay. had Trixie Mattel. Uh -huh. We had Shea Coulee. Ooh. We had Monet Exchange. Shea Coulee. I would have taken Shea Coulee. Okay. Shea Coulee has some of the best drag of all of the All-Stars winners. I have to agree. The only mm. thing that really f***s up her looks is her face. <laughs> <laughs> to catch you up, Alexis won the challenge with her Trinity the Tuck look, and then she sent home Lala after Lala saved her the week before. <laughs> now, girl. Now, girl. How do you feel about alliances when it comes to this kind of bull? <laughs> There's a difference between an alliance and a promise to someone, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh, so uh -huh. talk to me, what are your thoughts on this? Um, well, first of all, I gotta say like, that work room is very open. So like, mm -hmm. the fact that anyone is even able to talk soft enough in a corner to yeah. make an alliance <laughs> is saying something. <laughs> but this is what's tricky about the Alexis Michelle and Lala Ree scenario, is that Lala had saved her, mm -hmm. literally, and she comes with that bull of, I'll never forget this. I won't forget it at all. I know what you've done for me. Which to me goes, you know, you got me, right? You got me. And you Lala even think, says it. But it's all about the exact wording because it would not hold up in court that she promised that she was going to save her. Mm. It was just implied. Technicality. Yes. And Alexis Michelle is playing the game. We Do already, you think that's what Yeah, it is? because she's been lying. She's lying to everyone's face because, like, remember when uh, Heidi was asking her to confirm? Oh, yeah. Lie number one. Lie number one. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. she was like, yes. No. No. It, uh, hello. Yeah. But I think it's f***ed up because I really like La La Ree and I thought that was f***ing shady. The other part that is really intriguing is the fact that she's been crushing on La La Ree so openly throughout gonna, the season. Mm -hmm. You would think that, hey, bitch, if you want this one, <laughs> you would at least save them so yes. that you can put that <laughs> in your mouth. As a treat, she should go, yes. mm, mm, mm. Yeah, and now she's turning her story because like she was all up in Lala Ree's like culo, mm -hmm. but now she's all like, well, I guess I'm gonna find Candy Muse attractive. Oh yeah. That's and that is up. lie number three. That is, honey, that's lie number four, five, and six. Oh, like, damn. I mean, mm -hmm. no angle is Candy Muse attractive. I mean, get out of here. The <laughs> The bar is low. <laughs> it is. No, I just don't like her tactic, and I don't think it's even strategic at this point. I think that Candy Muse has something on Alexis Michelle because Alexis mm. is it. You know what I mean? It's something shady going on here. That could possibly be it. it but like, what is it? Like, I don't know. It can't possibly be like what? <laughs> 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 Is she gonna tell the world actually? Um... She said it! She said it, it was not me! So what do you think Lala is thinking when she's back at the hotel now? She's probably like, um, they got me, gal. <laughs> there you go. I mean, you know this feeling, being a loser. You have been, <laughs> <laughs> you have, you have been in, let's be real, you've been in that hotel room, mm -hmm. sad. <laughs> you have thought about, <laughs> Oh, wait, let me back that up. <laughs> you can't use that. Okay. So you're back at the motel thinking about <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I was... Um, I think that she's probably feeling betrayed. A lot of betrayal. Yeah. The worst part is that she's probably gonna watch this episode because in the beginning of the episode, everyone's just like, yay, everyone's mm -hmm. happy, she's gone. So yeah. like it's almost like they don't even care that she was. That's what I found yeah. really surprising. It's like she's reading the mirror and she's doing one of her dramatic speeches. I'm gonna miss her the most. You know, with that snooky ass voice she uses. And she says that and I'm thinking, no you're not, no you're not. And the only person that calls her out is Jimbo. Jimbo calls her out on it and that's when she confesses. It wasn't really a promise. The fact that Jimbo with her face covered up was able to clock that mm -hmm. was, was kind of funny. 
to be fair, that's the one time Jimbo looks soft. I mean, it really <laughs> was. That's how you filter yourself. Yes. Take note, Shea kool Yes. Now in Untucked, Candy and Alexis cut a deal so Candy could save herself. At this point, do you think that was ever real? I think so. I'm Candy is playing the game. She's making alliances. Mm -hmm. She's making sure that she's always in the good graces of her fellow queens. Yeah. And it seems to be working. But doesn't it seem at this point that everybody's kind of catching on to this? Mm. I think what everyone has in the back of their mind with Candy Muse is that peacock dress that she wore to the finale of her previous season. And they're like, oh, we got this in the bag. If she's, if she's in the top, we got this girl. So we see the lipsticks and we find out that the other queens had sent Lala home as well. Why do you think they kept Candy? Why do you think they saved her? Uh, maybe it was because they thought the judges' critiques of Candy's were a little bit better mm. than Lala's. And they were they were on such an even playing field at that point that mm. like any little thing could tip the scale. But on a very serious note, I mean, I've been making lots of jokes at your expense today, really, truthfully, and honestly, but I don't want this to come across as me being malicious. The question I have for you is, do lipsticks trigger you? Um, yes, that's why I use lip glosses now and <laughs> lip tints. <laughs> okay, here we go. The next day, queens enter and they're excited to be top four. Now, when you made top four on season three, what was the energy like in the room? Can you go back that far? <laughs> I, I have lost a lot of my memories. As you should. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, but I do remember when it was the top four, it was, there was a lot of sense of accomplishment. Yeah. And I see that with the queens in this episode. Mm -hmm. And what about All Stars in particular? Do you still hate the individuals that ruined your life? <laughs> what are you talking about? I, my life has not been ruined. I am living, honey. I want to know if any of the, the queens that made it further than me on my season have their own TV show. <gasps> I, that's, I, I want to know. Do you know the answer to that? You seem to know everything else. Is it on the cards it's right not, there? It's not on my cards. Oh, okay. not on my cards. It's not on my so I wanted to know. So I'm, I am living and I'm thriving and I'm having a great time. I have no resentment to, to my fellow contestants. Can we take a break? <laughs> <laughs>
She, she didn't even like stop to, to tweet something political. No, no. <laughs> now, Candy won her roast on season 13. Do you think that that's added pressure for her? A little bit. Listen, we say winner. We're using that term loosely. That means everybody else was just worse. Yeah. I didn't think she's like, oh my God, so funny. Candy is funny in confessionals, but the Rose, I thought, okay, she's okay. I think that it, it like gives her a little bit more confidence that she knows that she can do it. It's like a, she has the ability to do it. Wait, do you think Candy needs more confidence? No, but I think she has that confidence. Yeah. She doesn't need any more because she's got it already. She knows that she's gonna be able to at least do a, a decent job, <laughs> I think. You think she's capable of doing a good job when she can't say the word equestrian? That's funny though. <laughs> That's funny. Equestrian. Equ equestrian. <laughs> equestrian. I'm not gonna make fun of her list because. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, does I Candy she... have something on you too? <laughs> oh. she, does. <laughs> she does. Oh, she, she does. does. <laughs> it's that oversized tongue. <laughs> now, meanwhile, Alexis was famously green on season nine when she roasted Michelle Visage, and that went over so well. <laughs> it really did. <laughs> but now, <laughs> do you think that Alexis Michelle is nervous? Because, you know, it I... wasn't a great experience last time. I think that Alexis Michelle had built up in her mind that she was going to slay this. Yeah. Like she wrote a whole novel. <laughs> she did. She went up there and she'd recited her prose. Mm -hmm. And she she thought she and she went first, so she knew that she was going to knock out of the park and everyone else is gonna have to follow her. But do you think being first is a good thing or a bad thing? If you were Alexis Michelle, mm -hmm. um, you would go first because then maybe the judges will forget how bad your set was <laughs> by the time Jimbo goes last. And now, to be fair, Jimbo is not feeling so confident right now. I mean, it looks like Jimbo's sweating a little bit because Jimbo is taking a risk by doing the roast as Joan Rivers, which was Jimbo's previous snatch game on Canada, one of those other versions. Do you think this is a safe choice or do you think she should just be Jimbo? She uses like these characters as like a way to enhance her humor mm -hmm. already. So it seems like it's something safe to do. And then on the other hand, we have Jessica who was so concerned with crossing the line of being mean and being funny. And okay, now this is a roast. This is a chance you can do both. But I'm just curious, do you find Jessica Wilde as funny as I do? <laughs> She's hilarious. I love her. She's Hilarious. Hysterical. The, and just the way she just says anything ordinarily. Mm -hmm. Like the jokes, I don't know necessarily would be funny if someone else delivered them. Not at all. But the way she says her jokes are hilarious. <laughs> they slay. She says it with a smile. She says it with a cute accent. And then you, you realize that Bitch just read me for Phil. She did! Yes! It's a little secret side reading, which yes. I enjoy. So before the roast, unannounced, as she usually is, Katya shows up out of nowhere. What do you think about this medicated visit? <laughs> I don't know. I love when they have surprises. It yeah. was kind of random. It was random. That was, that's Katya. Her humor is completely random. She says something random and then everyone just laughs. So <laughs> why not? We'll fill up some time because apparently some of these queens aren't funny and we could use a little a giggle. Yeah. So speaking of Katya, is it true that you lent a wig to Katya for America's Next Top Model? Oh yeah, it was, it's very true. So me, Valentina and Katya, uh -huh. we were guests on America's Next Top Model, and no, I, I lost that too. <laughs> but um, yeah, she she brought this rotted wig, and so I had brought extra wig, and so I had I had lent it to her, and she and she looked great in it. It was You scarce. are a good person. I, I learned from you. You are a good person. Remember, it's paying it forward. Remember That's when you gave me that rotted wig <laughs> back in New York City all I those do. years ago? I do. I, I gave my rotted wig to Katya. <laughs> yeah, see. And now, and now maybe Katya will give her rotted wig to someone else. That's what drag is, people. Mm -hmm. Passing around ugly <laughs> wigs. The drag sisterhood of the rotted traveling wigs. wigs. Rotted yes. traveling wigs. <laughs> now, we've gotten to the point in the competition where Alexis sent home Lala Ree, and Alexis is now crushing on Candy. Well, I guess maybe that maybe maybe that means Candy's next. I don't know. You think? I know that Alexis Michelle is one horny <laughs> horny homosexual cross okay, You know what, you know what? I thought that was a safe question to ask, but where we're going and what's happening in my head right now, 
I think we you, need to stop. After all the hateful things that you said about Alexis Michelle, our sister, you have to live with that memory of her getting down forever. <laughs> like that one joke, the in the mouth at Folsom. That joke, that was funny. Okay, um, the picture you have painted in my mind. Yes, it's brown. It's even uglier than the face you painted today. <laughs> But I will get through this. You will. I will get through this. Let's talk the roast. The roast. Who stood out for you in the roast? Oh, our girl, Jessica Wilde. Jessica Wilde. She was like effortlessly hilarious. Yes. Really funny jokes, just hateful enough. That's it, yes. You know just I mean? hateful enough with that little wink, wink, wink. I think she can say and deliver anything and make it good. I thought she was really, really wonderful and I thought she should have won. No offense to Jimbo because Jimbo was brilliant. And I think Jimbo could have done the performance as Joan Rivers or not as Joan Rivers. It didn't hurt it, it didn't harm it. I thought Jimbo was brilliant. You know, I actually thought that Jimbo's set was good enough to do it without the Joan Rivers yeah. impersonation. Yeah. Jimbo yeah. was Hilarious. But I wanted Jessica to win. Yeah, I thought I, I thought because she was an unexpected mm -hmm. um, winner, I thought that she was hilarious. Yes, for sure. And you know who was not an unexpected winner? <laughs> me! <That's correct. laughs> Is it me? That's correct. Am I, did I win something for you guessing that this. right? You yeah. won this! Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh, do I get a scepter? <laughs> no, you don't. You get okay. a septic tank. Now, let me ask you a question. Who do you think struggled the most in this challenge? I think they all did a fairly good job. Just say it. I want to say, say that it. the worst the worst one for me was, I don't think that she necessarily thought that she was doing bad or doing poorly. I, I, I don't think anyone felt like they were doing poorly. I think that they all thought that they did a great job. So who was it? It, it was Alexis. I have to agree. Yeah, it just wasn't funny. Like, maybe like they needed a, like a warm up act. Well, maybe the person that closed the show should have been the warm up act, <laughs> and then have her come back again and do the competition. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just last week, just last week, she was in the top and did a beautiful job with the look challenge that I gave her the props for. It. This is not her forte. No, Alexis Michelle is a beauty queen. Like, like. Always, she's on certain always. Days. On certain days. I think she looks gorgeous. I think she's looked gorgeous the entire season. Okay. Um, she even looked go gorgeous when she was delivering these god awful jokes. Okay, okay, okay. All right, <laughs> let's talk runway. Are you ready for our runway? Yes, okay. runways are my favorite. And this particular theme is, I mean, it's up there. It is everyone's favorite, Snow Bunny. I like it. I, it's very specific. I like it. I love any any excuse for a drag queen to wear fur. <laughs> I love. What kind of fur? <laughs> Edith's gonna hate me, but real dead animals. You can't. Like, <laughs> whole animals. <laughs> whole animals that deserve to be a <laughs> coat. No. Um, <laughs> none of these queens can afford real fur. <laughs> what would you have done for Snow Bunny? Sure, but I might have worn skis down Ooh, the runway. But wait a minute, weren't you a bunny on All Stars 4? Yes, I was like a bondage bunny. Oh. Yes, I was all tied up and I hopped down the, the runway. Ooh. Yeah, that's why I would probably do skis. I got it, you would have changed it up. Switch it up, honey. Switch it yes, up. I mean, of yes, of course. You would have switched it up, but you still would have lost. But yeah, <laughs> we're gonna work. That, that's probably, you're probably right. Snow Bunny. First up, we have Miss Alexis Michelle. I liked this look. Mm -hmm. I think her body was snatched. Yep. I think the it was really cool. I like the big proportions. I like the duffel bag. I, I would have maybe had the, the crushed velvet trim be fur. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. You know? Like a fake fur? Like a faux fur, like that would have been funnier because I, I d didn't realize until she was walking off the set, like the thing that she was holding with the ball in the end, mm -hmm. it was actually like, you know, like a- A hood. Like a Santa hat. Yeah, like a Santa hood, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like a long, like, elf hat, which would have read more like a hat if it had like the furry ball. Gotcha. As opposed to just a little crushed velvet circle. So if I showed you my furry balls, you would say, oh my God, that's a yes. hat. Yes, and then I would call HR. Got it. Okay. So I think it's a good look. I like the color. I, I, I think it's a, an interesting color to use in the runway. I thought it was a good, safe look. Um, she does look 
pretty. She looks nice. Yeah. Next up is our good girl, Miss Jessica Wilde. I love this. I do too. I love the color. Mm -hmm. It's really bold. I love the furry boots. I do too. I love the furry boots. And then I really love that like Nordic snowflake pattern on the coat. Yes. I really I, like that. I love everything about it. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's Jessica Wilde. I can say no wrong. I love everything about it. She's fabulous. And it's, it's just so great to see somebody come back from so many seasons ago and actually just, you know, plowing through this on a level that she's doing. It's just great, great, great on all levels. You know? yeah. Next up, we have Miss Candy Muse. This one's not my favorite. I don't, I, there's a lot of things that are wrong with this. Okay, tell me. I don't like. We've got time. I, <laughs> we got time. I'm not a fan of the wig. I'm kind of confused by the little diaper thing that she has. Mm -hmm. Like before like maxi pads had wings and sticky on it, mm -hmm. it was actually like a thing that you had a belt on. Mm -hmm. Like you, like women had to belt on pads, mm -hmm. like basically a towel. Why are you like, looking at me? Because this is an old reference and you're looking at me going, you remember when you yes, used to do Yes, back Bianca? when you used to have your period before you yeah. went through menopause. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, it, it kind of looks, it looks, it looks weird. And then also like the, the match, the tights don't match. It's too PC for me. It's too many little separates that I don't like. I like the moon boots though. Moving on, next we have, oh, and finally, I forget it's only for forgive me. And finally, we have Jimbo. Oh, this is glamour. I love this. Nope, this is... stop right there. This is not glamour. There are two things that are happening here that are upsetting me. Okay? What? Listen, and this is how, listen, I've been critiquing Jimbo. Sorry about it. No earrings! Oh. Where are the earrings? Okay, so she's not perfect, but I still like this look. Okay, I like the look as well. But the ice bucket challenge wig, can't deal with that. That little flat wig on that big head and a coat full of feathers. We need proportions here. And then, no earrings! That face with no earrings! If you know Bianca, you know that like the earrings are there to distract from her face. So exactly. You need to have. You did a earrings. good job today. That's why I have these you earrings did a too. Good They're job nice and today. big. They're yes, nice and yes. big. Who was your favorite from the runway looks? Jessica Wilde. Ah, Jessica Wilde was your favorite. Yes. And your least favorite? My least favorite is probably Candy Muse's look. Ooh, okay. I love Jessica Wilde's look would be my top look because it seemed like it fit the theme and it was yes. appropriate. And I would say my second look was Alexis Michelle's. But no, who's, who's the ones you didn't like? I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> the piecemealing of the candy outfit upset me more than the earrings. That's a lie. It's the earrings. The earrings. I can't. Jimbo, sorry, bitch. I mean, come on. We are gay men. You know what you need to do? Fill those holes. <laughs> yes, daddy. <laughs> Don't call me daddy. <laughs> so, after the judges' critiques, we find out that the winner this week is Jimbo getting her fourth win. What do you think of that Manila Luzon? I'm like shocked and I'm really, really, really proud of her. And after watching the the roast, I think that she she definitely won. I don't necessarily think that that's who I would have picked as the winner. We would have picked Jessica. We yeah. know that. We know that. I would that. have picked Jessica. Now, do you think that these three queens being so close to going home and you know what that's like, do you think that they are scared? They should be. Yeah. They, yeah. Sh they, they better be. What's interesting about this episode is that Jimbo has never been in the bottom at all. Do you think that Jimbo is ecstatic? <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah. I know Jimbo. She... But she is so proud of her performance in this season. But doesn't that make you a bigger target? Not anymore. You think? No. Now it's gonna become from, from four to uh -huh. three. So like. Wait, what? They're yes, go I can four. do math. Is this how this works? This is how it works, girl. Wait, break it down. Unless they have chocolate bars involved. Then, oh, the then chocolate bar. Oh, that was a great idea. <laughs> Bringing in candy, not Muse. The other <laughs> you can't eat. I think she should be very proud of herself. I'm, I'm very proud of. I Jimbo. think the track record is pretty amazing, you know? And and really, Jimbo has delivered the goods. The last two runways were not my favorite, but that's me being nitpicky. And that's what I'm here for, to be a nitpicky mm -hmm. Okay, next we find out that the lip sync assassin is none other than Silky Nutmeg Ganache. Now, Miss Silky is a good time, isn't she? She is oh. a good time. <laughs> I, I love I love Miss Silky. I she too. is 
hilarious. Yeah. She brings out all the stops when she goes out there on stage. So this is gonna be good and I'm excited. Jimbo and Silky lip sync to Freakazoid by Midnight Star. What did you think of that lip sync? It was an interesting choice. <laughs> it, it seemed like it was a perfect fit for a Jimbo lip sync. Yeah. She kind of has this like, Alternative, quirky, quirky funny. freaky, mm -hmm. freaky deaky kind of um, vibe to her performance. And she brought back her ghost baloney. But maybe that's outfit. the trick. Maybe she's most comfortable when she's doing a character. Here was a character she's done before, and it finally worked for the lip sync. And spoiler alert, she wins the lip sync. Yay, Jimbo! Yes, how much money did she win? I don't know, but Silky was in disbelief, I must say. I, I am actually in disbelief. <laughs> Silky I'm... was like, damn. All right, and then we see that Jimbo reveals the lipstick, and Jimbo has chosen Alexis Michelle. She unzips it out of her she crotch. She unzips it out of her crotch, yes. digs deep in there, and pulls up that lipstick, and it's Alexis Michelle. Do you agree? Yes! Yeah. Yes, yes, we uh, yeah, agree. Yeah, I agree. I now, agree. well, listen, I've been given a but based on this challenge, she was the weakest link yes. on stage during the roast. Jimbo did not have an alliance with Alexis Michelle, and it seemed fitting for her to go home. It's like she primed herself to go. Yeah. What do the kids say? F around and find out. So, Manila, all jokes aside, we wish you well, Miss Alexis Michelle. We truly do. But now we're down to three girls. Who is your front runner? Oh, well, Jimbo is going to take the crown. Jimbo, okay. Yeah, yeah. We've got your answer. Well, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here with us today, Miss Millie. It's always a treat to catch up with you. Did you have a good time today? Not at all. Great. Yeah. And we must thank you all for joining me here at the Pit Stop. Make sure you catch me here back again next week where we recap yet another episode of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars 8. See you then. As I was saying, you lost. <laughs> now, <laughs> now. Yes, we get it. Okay, yes, we get it, we get it, we get it. Yes, wait, wait, we wait, 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 wait. Every time you say that I lost, yeah, y'all have to take a shot, okay? Okay, of what? Like a drink or penicillin? No. <laughs> oh, hey, everybody, it's Michelle Visage. Do you want Emmy-nominated gay <laughs> Well, then subscribe to RuPaul's Drag Race on YouTube.